All right, we're going to do a quick review of some of the properties of angles that are created by parallel lines and uh, transversals. So first of all, what a transversal is, is a transversal crosses parallel lines. Um, so on this diagram I've written right here, uh, that I've drawn right here, that, this line right here, would be the transversal. It crosses the parallel lines. Now, parallel lines, of course, they have the same slope, right? So if you have uh, some way to determine the slope, you can uh, see if their slopes are the same between two lines and they're parallel. Um, the thing is, you can't assume lines are parallel. You either have to be um, told, so like the problem will state the two lines are parallel, or they have to be marked. Now one way parallel lines can be marked is with like an extra set of arrows like these right here. Sometimes they'll be double arrows or triple arrows or whatever. But in some way that the, the lines will be marked to indicate that they're parallel. Or uh, you can tell lines are parallel because of the angle relationships that exist. Uh, those angle relationships we're actually gonna, I'm gonna show you in this video right here. All right, so here we've got a pair of parallel lines, L1 and L2 and a transversal. And what I've done is I've put a letter in these angles that are that are created by uh, these intersections. So I've got a cluster of angles up here, A through D, and I've got another cluster right here. I decided to switch it up and change the order. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about uh, some of these angle relationships. Now you might know from before that vertical angles are angles that uh, well, they share a pair of lines and a vertex, and they're opposite of one another, like A and D. And uh, vertical angles are always congruent. You can measure them if you wanted. You can, you know, like uh, like angle E right here looks like it's um, let's see, 115 degrees. That's what angle E looks like. And if I flip it over right here and I throw this on angle M, you can see uh, I get 115 degrees again. Also, so angles. E and M are vertical. So are F and G, and so are A and D and C and B. Uh, those are all pairs of vertical angles. Now, note, um, E and M are a pair. They're congruent. F and G, kind of funny when you say it like that, the letter, the angle F and the angle G are also vertical. However, so, so these two are congruent to each other, and these two are congruent to each other, but E and F, not congruent. In fact, E and F uh, make what are called a, a linear pair because together the two angles make a straight line. And of course, linear, linear pairs are always supplementary. Supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. Now, people mix up supplementary with complementary all the time. So a quick way to remember that supplementary adds up to 180 and complementary adds up to 90 is you can actually visualize that C being a 90 and supplementary being a 180. Anyway, hopefully that, that might help you remember how that works. So, back on track. Um, let's talk about co-interior angles. Co-interior. So, first of all, co, uh, what this is referring to is the same side of the transversal. So co-interior angles will be on the same side of the transversal. So here's the transversal. So A, C, E, and G are all on the left side. B, D, F, and M are all on the right side. So these could be co-something and these could be co-something. So co means the same side and interior means in between the parallel lines. Okay, so co-interior angles would be on the same side of the transversal and in between the parallel lines. So C and E would be a pair of co-interior angles. Now, co-interior angles turn out that they are supplementary. So co-interior angles are, I'll write that right, co-interior angles, supplementary, which means they add up to 180, okay? Co-exterior angles, same deal, right? Co means the same side, but exterior means exterior means outside of the parallel lines. So A and G, they're both on the same side of this transversal. They're on the left, but they're on the outside of the parallel lines. They are also complement or sorry, supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. They add up to 180. 
So A plus G is going to equal 180. Now, um, here, here's how that works. Um, do you see how E and F add up to 180? Well, it turns out C and D, sorry, C and F are what are called alternate interior. Alternate interior. And um, alternate interior angles means that they are on the opposite sides of the transversal. So they're on opposite sides, but inside the parallel lines. That's for parallel right there. So alternate interior angles are, um, they're actually congruent to each other. So C and F actually add up to make the same uh, C and F, sorry, are congruent to one another. They'd be the same measurement. Now here's the thing. E and F, they add up to 180. They make a straight line. They're collinear. Um, and it turns out that E and C also add up to 180 because C and F are equal to each other. Uh, so crash course, we're going kind of quick. Not going to get into these. Course uh, too, too deeply. Corresponding means um, it's in a relative same location. So, see I've got a cluster up here on the top, and I've got a cluster on the bottom. The bottom right angle up here is D, and the bottom right angle down here is M. So, corresponding angles of uh, one pair would be D and M, uh, and it turns out that they are always congruent. Now, what I do in class all that time is I have students make two parallel lines using a ruler, and then they actually measure and label all these things, and you would be able to see this angle and this angle are exactly the same. All right, alternate exterior. Now, just like alternate interior, the alternate word means uh, on opposite sides of this transversal right here. So, one on the left and one on the right. Exterior means the outside of the parallel lines. So, A and M would be an example. And the other example would be B and G. Those are alternate, uh, alternate exterior angles. Now let's see how the relationship here works. So first of all, G and F are um, G and F are vertical. So G and F are the same exact measurement. Um, F and B, they're corresponding, so they're the same angle. So if G equals F and F equals B, G equals B. Turns out, alternate exterior angles are congruent. So um, real quick review. Make sure we got all this. Parallel lines. Cannot assume they're parallel. Either you have to be told in words, uh, it has to be marked in the paper, or you can determine they're parallel by their slopes, or maybe there's some angle properties on there, and then you can determine that they're parallel because of these some of these angle properties. So co-interior. Uh, co-interior angles means that they're on the same side of the transversal and inside. Co-exterior would be same side of the transversal, but on the outside, like, like B into M. Um, alternate interior means on opposite sides, but on, on the opposite sides of this transversal, but on the inside of the parallel lines. Alternate exterior, alternate exterior would be opposite sides of the transversal, but on the outside. And these would be congruent to each other. These two are congruent to each other. And Let's see, corresponding is same relative location. So like A is the top left of this cluster. He is the top left of this cluster. E and A are going to be congruent. So I hope this helps. Have a good day.